Welcome to Weld.com. I'm Paul Brown, and I'll be your host. So today we're going to talk about transfer modes. What are they? Well, when it comes to MIG welding, transfer mode is how the metal moves across the arc. These modes are short circuit, globular, and axial spray transfer. And like any process, it's important to understand these modes and their uses so you pick the right one for whatever project you're doing. Let's have a closer look. But first, I've got to prep some coupons for today's episode in my fancy new grinding jacket from Ferd. I really like these grinding wheels they make and their sanding discs because they're fast and they last. And they also make a fantastic wire wheel that doesn't leave little wires sticking out of your skin. So give them a try. Okay, now that I've got my Lincoln welding jacket back on, I can fire up my Lincoln 260 Power MIG. We're going to be using Lincoln Super Arc L56 today, 035, and it's AWS 5.17. We're going to start out doing the short circuit welding, which is the easiest to do, and most small machines can do that without any problem at all. So we want to select our process and scroll back and forth, and it says MIG, and that looks good. We'll select that. We're going to select steel. We're going to go down to 035 wire, select that. We're going to select Argon 25 CO2. We're going to go down here to 3 8 cents because that's what we're welding for our coupons. And we're going to select electrode positive. Okay, now the machine's telling me that it wants 450 inches per minute and 22 volts, but I think that's a little hot for what we're doing because we're going to be doing vertical up welds. So I'm going to turn this down to, oh, 180. It's nice that you can put in single digits on this instead of jumping from 10 or 20 per number. And we're going to put in 18 and a half volts. And uh, we're ready to go. Short circuit is the wire shorting out against the weld pool or material, then melting back and depositing a small amount of metal, then coming back forward and doing it again and again and again. This happens hundreds of times a second and gives the arc a frying bacon sound. It's very useful for welding thin material or filling gaps, where you can add small amounts of material and let the weld pool cool so you don't burn through the material. It's also great for out of position welds which is any weld not in a flat position. The bead can be pushed or pulled, and that will affect the penetration, bead shape, and control of the puddle. And it also lets you see the puddle from a different perspective for hard to get to places. Okay, now that we've done the short circuit, let's go to globular transfer. We're gonna to have to change our wire settings and voltage, and we're also gonna change our gas to 92% argon and 8% CO2 and see how that works out. So let's try, I don't know, 350 inches a minute. That's way up there. And uh, 22 and a half volts ought to do it. Let's see how that works out. Globular transfer happens when current density is higher than needed for short circuit, but lower than needed for axial spray transfer. Metal droplets are much larger in size, irregular in shape, and short circuiting occurs at random intervals. Globular transfer has limited use in vertical welding of large fillets due to the fluid weld pool. It also has a lot of spatter. Okay, that globular transfer went down really well. A lot less spatter than I would have thought it had. Let's try some spray transfer now. We're going to change the gas one more time and go to 95% argon, 5% oxygen, which is a recommended gas for spray transfer. It's a lot hotter than that 92.8 argon CO2. So we're gonna go to um, 475 inches a minute which is probably about 250 amps or more. 
And let's go up to 28 volts because it really likes that higher voltage to be able to transition into the spray mode. So let's go check this out and see how it works. Axial spray transfer is very different than short circuit or globular. The voltage is so high using this process that the filler wire is melted before touching the base metal and does not even touch the weld pool in solid form. Instead, the molten metal literally shoots out the end of the wire like a hose blasting water. And the sound is very different too. It is a whooshing, quiet type noise. Small duty machines don't have the duty cycle or even the voltage to run spray arc. With this much wire speed, you're putting down a lot of metal very fast and the puddle is very fluid. So welding vertical and overhead is really out of the question. The bead will not have the pretty stack of dimes everyone looks for, and it will look like you laid a bead with a tube of toothpaste, with no stress risers though from the overlapping beads. The whooshing sound, in my opinion, is very nice to listen to and is unlike the frying bacon sound of short circuit, which I find really hurts my ears because it's loud. Now for a little safety lesson. I know a lot of companies require herring protection when welding, which is not a bad idea for two reasons. One, protecting your herring from loud noise, and two, keeping sparks out of your ears. Having a big spark go in your ears and you hear it sizzling and burn like the devil while you can't do anything is no fun, and you may burn a hole in your eardrum like I did. So button up those ear holes. I find earplugs are the best for that. Muffs get in the way of your hood coming down, but the plugs don't. But you need to put them in correctly, and that takes time for them to expand. This type is instantly ready to dampen the sound and can be removed instantly for either talking or listening if needed. They don't seem to collect dirt easy, and they stay together on a cord, so they're always there. And you can clean them with water over and over, unlike the foam types. Using every day, I can get a few months from a pair. And if you wet them a little bit, they slide right in and are instantly ready to go. Okay, let's look at some of these welds we did with short circuit transfer. We started out with a vertical weld at 175 inches per minute and 18 and a half volts. That works out to be about 105 amps. And it was extremely controllable in a vertical weld. We're welding on 3 8 material. So even though it seems like the amperage is low, it had great penetration on top of that. We then switched over to a horizontal weld and we bumped up the wire feed and the voltage to 220 inches per minute and 19 and a half volts. And that gave us a little bit more wetting in on this thicker material. And we were real happy with the way it, it came out. We tried actually three different patterns here. We did a cursive E over here. We did a push pull backwards and forwards in the middle and then kind of a crazy Z weave down here on the ends. And it worked out fine. Then we decided that we would change gases and I went to a 92% argon, 8% CO2 and to see how that would work with short circuit. And we did a straight stringer bead here Everything wet in really fine. That was 220 inches per minute at 19 and a half volts. We then swapped it around and did a, a little bit of a weave on the fillet to see how that would work out. And we got great wetting also. So what we were trying to show is that you can use a different gas other than 7525. And that other gas can also be used for our other tests that we did which were globular transfer and axial spray transfer. Let's look at this globular weld. I was expecting a lot more spatter with it, but it actually came out really nice with a slight weave in a horizontal position. We used 92.8 gas, 92% argon, 8% CO2. We had 350 inches per minute at 22 and a half volts. Now that was just below the transition point of going into the axial spray transfer mode. Normally with globular transfer, you get a lot of spatter with that because you've got this erratic sort of ball of metal that goes on the end and you don't really know where it's gonna short out. But it came out pretty nice. And now we have our spray transfer welds and it was extremely hot. Boy, my hand did got hot. We had a lot of wire going through, 400 inches a minute at 27 and a half volts. 
That works out to about 250 amps. The puddle was so fluid that I couldn't control it, even in a horizontal position. And by trying to weave it, it just got even worse. After I did the one weld, I decided, well, let me try a vertical down. I figured I'd get a candle wax melting off a candle with that. And it came out pretty good, actually. I did do a weave on that and tried to push the weld puddle upwards, but it still is not the best looking thing, but boy, it put a lot of metal down. After that, I decided to do a straight bead with the 92% argon, 8% CO2 to see how much better that would be because it's a little bit cooler without that oxygen in there. And it came out really well. It was just a straight push bead. You can't do a drag bead with this because your metal is still so fluid it builds up. But if you got to put down some heavy welds on thick material, because this is 3 8 inch thick, that was one pass, that's the way to go. Hope you guys learned something today. I sure did. See you next time.